Hi, I'm Josh Richards. I'm a hand, elbow, and shoulder surgeon in Oakland, California. Today I'm going to talk to you about what to expect after a radial head or neck fracture. Uh, this is a very common injury about the elbow. Uh, the radial head or neck is this area here. On the thumb side is your radius bone and at the very top is a rounded bone which uh, does rotation for you. So a very subtle crack in the elbow occurs commonly. There'll be a small crack uh, in the radial head or radial neck is below the rounded portion. Um, this is an interesting injury in that sometimes it doesn't really hurt very much. Uh, sometimes it's super easy to recover from. And then sometimes it's kind of a disaster. If it's broken into a lot of pieces, that's obviously a disaster. Uh, which can be fixed, um, but a much bigger problem than someone who has a tiny crack or the bone hasn't shifted at all. So we call that a non-displaced fracture, whether it's the neck or the head, if it hasn't moved or shifted at all. Uh, the importance of that is to get in with a professional, like a hand surgeon, elbow surgeon, quickly to assess whether it's a stable injury to start early motion. The biggest problem with elbow fractures is loss of permanent motion, which does happen. So getting your elbow moving quickly, if it's stable, is very important. Uh, realistically, only an elbow specialist, hand specialist can really de determine that. I mean, an orthopedic surgeon can as well, but uh, a primary care doctor may not have the tools to identify that. And the, ur the emergency room or urgent care, they definitely should not be telling people it's stable to start moving, because it might not be. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if you have pain on the outside of your elbow, that's one thing, that's where the fracture is. But if you have pain on the inside of your elbow, you could have torn a ligament very badly, or even have more fractures that aren't identified in the emergency room. And if you start to move your elbow right away, that could be bad, where you could dislocate your elbow. Uh, so you need an orthopedic surgeon to evaluate you, determine whether it's stable. Almost always it is stable and can be moved aggressively early, but not always. Some fractures are, are worse than others. So what do I mean by that? Well, the typical, I'll see a couple of these a week. They'll come in. Uh, they'll already be splinted from the ER urgent care. Hopefully I see them within the first three or four days, which is ideal. And then I get them out and then I examine them, determine whether it's stable or not. And then I talk to them about getting their elbow moving. Basically, that's all we talk about, is to get the elbow moving. Uh, it's a weird thing, you know, your doctor's telling you to move something that's broken, which is counterintuitive, so it's a difficult discussion for some people. Uh, there's a lot of fear involved, you know, here's this guy telling me to do something that actually hurts, and my arm's broken, so there's a fair amount of trust, obviously. But it's really two extremes. If I can get through to someone, and they actually push hard and get their motion back, I'll see them the following week, and honestly, they have full motion and it doesn't even hurt. As opposed to someone who's too scared and they won't do it, they come back the next week, they're very stiff, they're still in a lot of pain, and their recovery is going to be many months of pain, pushing through pain. It's such a difference than the people that actually get it moving, who do so well, and this becomes the easiest fracture they've ever gone through or could ever gone through. So let me go through the bright side first. So the basic idea is, surgeon tells you it's stable, you need to start pushing on your arm and get it straight. So uh, typically that's on a flat surface with your hand in neutral, like you're holding a cup of water, and you're pushing through pain, it hurts, so your arm's on something flat, your upper arm's flat. You exhale while you push, count to six, seven, eight, relax, repeat, that's it. Hour later, do it again. Push through the pain. You have to push through the pain to get your motion back. If it's not hurting, you know, it's, you're not pushing hard enough. If you do this, typically, if you push hard, within a few days, you're already getting it straight. It's the tightness that hurts. So as soon as you loosen it, it actually doesn't hurt anymore to do that. So if you want to get through this pain as quick as possible, how do you do that? Well, you get your arm straight as quick as possible. So nine out of 10 of the patients I see within the first four or five days, they come back the following week, they're moving fine, doesn't even really hurt. Then I'm just trying to slow them down, telling them that no, you can't ride your bike. No, you can't lift weights. You got a broken arm. You don't, 
lift push pull over two three pounds but you can move it you can use it you can tie it to your hair you just take it easy um, the other thing that's weird about this injury is it doesn't always heal quickly so most bones heal in six to eight weeks I tell people 10 to 12 for this one because uh, it often takes a long time that if they got their motion back usually doesn't hurt much you're just getting bored by two months they're like wait a minute I mean this feels pretty good why can't I uh, go do whatever I want and it's because it's not healed yet um, oddly enough some people it's super frustrating it takes like four to six months and sometimes they need surgery to get it to heal uh, but that's more on the rare side so it's a bit of a balancing act you gotta get your motion back quickly and then basically rest it you know you just double check that you have your motion but don't push on it hard all day if you don't need to if it's moving fine and then you rest it because the rest portion will help it to heal but again, if you don't get it moving aggressively, you'll never get your motion back. And unfortunately, the average person loses 10 degrees of their ability to straighten their arm. But if you get in quickly and you move aggressively, honestly, nine times out of 10, you won't lose that motion. Um, so sometimes, however, they're significantly displaced and they need surgery. Um, the surgery involves fixing it and making a cut over the outside of your elbow. Um, and then either using plates and screws to actually put the pieces back together or if the surgeon determines the joint surface is too banged up and there's too many pieces they put a replacement in there or an implant um, that's all up to the surgeon uh, and his expertise to decide that and a lot of times we have both tools available to us just in case we make that decision in the surgery afterwards again early motion is the goal so the idea is there to whatever is the most stable fixation and surgery to allow the person to get moving aggressively um, so because you need to if you don't move aggressively after surgery you're going to lose permanent motion so you need to get moving with or without surgery aggressively um, so if you work hard at motion it'll come back if you don't work hard at motion it's not coming back so you know it's it's a tough one um, and that can be really hard on people, you know, I, I don't want to underestimate that, but your ability to push through pain is important when it comes to this one. Um, as far as sort of how long, as I mentioned, it can take a long time to heal. Um, typically, if you're not real stiff, this is about as easy as it gets. If it is real stiff, this can be really brutal. Long months of pushing through pain and ultimately you can lose some real motion. If you lose a lot of motion, there's surgeries we can do to actually give you better motion, but those aren't easy to go through either, so don't count on that. Do your best to get your motion back. So in summary, radial head or radial neck fractures, they're kind of weird. You have to get see a surgeon quick as possible, determine if it's stable, or they make it stable for you, and then you get moving aggressive quickly. That's the key to the whole thing, is aggressive motion early. Um, and then usually you're out for two to three months uh, of well, sports. Uh, if you're lucky, it's eight weeks healed and you're back at it. Uh, thank you very much.